Hey friends, it's Shirley Bobshaw from the Home and Family Show and welcome to my palm parlor. What do you think? I think this is very cool. Who doesn't love a gorgeous, sunny skied kind of uh, palm tree? Well, we always think of sunny skies with palms. Here's the good news. Did you know that there are special palms that have been cultivated and developed and raised indoors so that you can enjoy them as an indoor plant year round. Um, I've got some of them today and I want to show you some really, really good recommendations. Okay, if you have a small space and you love the look of a palm, the parlor palm might be good for you. This is the Neanthus Bella. It's a gorgeous, small growing. You see how it's kind of roundish? This is a palm that stays relatively short It'll grow eventually to about four feet, but it's a very slow grower. And it's going to stay around maybe a little bit wider than this. But what makes this such an attractive uh, little palm is that it can survive and do well in a room that doesn't have a lot of natural light or even supplemental light. So it's good for medium to low light. The parlor palm is a great beginner palm. Let me show you something else. Now, if you have bigger space and you love that glorious classic palm look with the fronds, you may like a Kentia palm. The Kentia palm, also known as the Sentry palm, is a very popular, larger growing palm. But what makes it really special is that it grows really slow. So you may find that they're a little bit more expensive than the parlor palm, just because to get it to this size is a lot of work because eventually this can reach about 10 feet tall, maybe four feet wide, and has that really graceful pendulous look of your palm frond. So it's a beautiful palm for an area that's a little bit larger. Now, take a look at this, the Caryota, or the fishtail palm. This is really cool. Take a closer look. Look at these leaves. I love them. I, I mean, to me, they look like torn paper, but they're, you know, they're called commonly the fishtail palm. This is also a slow grower. It can take, uh, you know, indoor temperatures. And all of these, by the way, do well between 60 degrees, no colder than that, 60 to 85, 90 degrees. So they can be comfortable in the temperatures that we're comfortable. But the Caryota, the fishtail palm, is one that needs a little bit more light. So this one you want to place near a window or a bright spot, no direct sunlight, okay? But this one is going to need uh, a little bit more light than the Sentry or Kentia palm and your parlor palm. I wanted to mention, when you are looking for an indoor palm, you want to find a palm that's been cultivated indoors. Now you may go to the big box store and see, you know, a beautiful Kentia palm for $30 or a parlor palm for $10. Be very aware of the fact that if it's a palm that's been grown outdoors for the landscape, because remember, plants are really for the outdoors, then it's not going to do well inside. So always look for a palm that has been cultivated for indoor use. So now, how do you take care of an indoor plant like this? Well, something that's really, really important is that your potted palm be planted in a very well-draining soil. Because in nature, you know, it may be in the tropics, in the understory, it gets water, but it goes right through in the sand because there's a lot of sand in that soil. So you can find, like Ebi Stone has a uh, citrus and palm potting mix and, and soil mix. It's really important because this has all of the essential ingredients to keep your palm happy, but more than anything has a great texture and porosity. So the water that you give it just drains through. The bane of the existence of a palm is to be sitting in water. That will destroy it. And what happens, you end up with little brown tips on your leaves. So not a good thing. One of the good things about these palms, indoor palms, is that they really don't need to be watered often. And what I mean by that is you should wait until the soil, and I'm going to stick my finger in just to show you. When you stick your finger in a couple of inches, ah, what a good boy am I. No, that's a nursery story. No, listen, this is dry. That is a good thing. That means it's time to water it. So your indoor palms are not to be watered every day. I would say that usually it's about 
every 10 days to two weeks, sometimes a little bit longer in the cool season. So what they will need is to be watered at that time thoroughly. I mean, give it a lot of water. If you have a patio that you can roll it to, see how I have this on casters? Well, this happens to be a big pump, but if you invest in a big pump, make sure you put it in casters so you can roll it outside, and then, look at this. I've got a big uh, gallon, five gallon of water here, and something that's important is I've allowed, this is tap water, I've allowed it to sit overnight because tap water has a lot of salts, has chlorine in it, and that's not good for your palm. The palm is really sensitive to salt especially. So I just let it sit overnight so it can dissipate some of those gases. Um, or if you have filtered water or distilled water, perfect. But I would probably take this somewhere, if it's a big palm, I would push it, I would totally drench it with water, let it run through, let it run through, and then bring it in. Now, of course, if you have a little pond like this, that's not a big deal, but it's the same principle. You could make sure that you maybe take it to the sink and just thoroughly let it water it that time, let the water come out. And then when it's nice and, and it's not dripping anymore, put it down and leave it alone for a good three weeks, whatever time it is when it feels dry. You're going to thank me for that because really that's probably one of the classic reasons why palms die indoors is people just keep watering them. They think that they need to give them water constantly and they don't need that. They do like humidity though. So if you have a little humidifier, if you want to mist them, that is wonderful. As far as fertilizing, I think it's really important to use an organic blend. And the reason for that is organic blends have nitrogen, which is essential for the green growth that you see here, but it's a very natural formula, it's a natural source. It doesn't burn the uh, roots or the plant. And that's something that nitrogen tends to do. So if you get an organic blend, you can cut the dose in half. Whatever it says here to feed a container plant, put it in half. You're indoors. You don't want rampant growth. You don't want it to grow, grow, grow. But give it what it needs. And this is during the spring and summer. When it starts getting fall, uh, cold in the fall and winter, you want to cut back and not fertilize because you don't want it to grow, to grow then. You want it just to kind of mellow out. Give it water infrequently but in abundance. And if you can give it distilled water or rainwater, great. Or just put it out like this so that it's nice and clear. The other thing is just feed it during the growing season, spring and summer. Put it in a room, 60 degrees minimum to 85, 90 degrees. It can take the heat. Uh, your parlor palm, your cantia palm, low to medium light, no problem. As a matter of fact, you could even keep these in an office where you turn off the lights at the end of the day. They're good. Your fishtail palm needs a little brighter light, a little more care. It doesn't want to dry as much, but again, do not overwater these beautiful creatures. So what do you think? You want to get yourself an indoor palm? I think they're really cool. For tips like this and more, come visit me on the Home and Family Show weekdays on the Hallmark Channel. And of course, come and visit me on my page, The Garden World Report. All right, guys, that's it for today. See you next week.